Hello and welcome to the European Parliament, a bit seat here in Strasbourg in France. But the bulk of its political work is done at its site in Brussels. And to make matters even more confusing, the bulk of its admin work is done in Luxembourg. <laughs> 751 MEPs work on EU laws. They represent the diverse interests of 500 million Europeans and every five years they are elected directly by the citizens of their country. In front of me are one, two, three, four, twenty-eight flags, one for each member state, but each country doesn't have a right to the same number of representatives in Parliament. The allocation of seats depends on the size of the population. The maximum possible number of MEPs is 96, as in the EU's biggest member, Germany, and the minimum is 6, as in its smallest members, Luxembourg, Cyprus, Estonia and Malta. But what do all these MEPs do? The European Parliament has three principal powers, which are increasing all the time. MEPs work on and vote on European laws, covering almost all the EU's areas of competence, and that's a lot of competences. MEPs also work on the EU budget. At some point, all of the EU's expenditures are discussed here. And one other power which is no less important, MEPs also have a certain amount of control over other EU institutions and agencies. For example, it's MEPs who elect the President of the European Commission. So everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing in Parliament, they've designed a colour-coded calendar. Red for Plenary Week. Pink for Committees Week. Blue for Political Groups Week and Turquoise when MEPs go to their constituencies. It's here in Strasbourg, in this big spherical chamber, that the key decisions are adopted. That happens during the plenary session when votes take place on different articles of legislation. Plenary, from the Latin word plenum, related to full, because all MEPs come together in the same chamber. These sessions are a short, intensive week, once every month. MEPs want to pass, or at least vote on, a maximum number of files. For most of the time, though, it's preparatory work that keeps MEPs busy, and that happens during pink and blue weeks in the Parliament in Brussels. Pink for Parliamentary Committee Week. For example, human rights, security and defence, foreign affairs, transport and tourism, budgetary affairs and the environment. All of these policy areas are treated separately by MEPs in select committees, like this one, Economic and Monetary Affairs. In each of these rooms, each of these committees, MEPs meet each other depending on their expertise in a particular area of European law. Here they examine and amend proposals coming from the Commission and the European Council. There are around 20 parliamentary committees. Blue for Political Groups Week. These are always in Brussels in smaller committee meetings. But in this case, it works also according to the political affiliation of each MEP. It could be the European People's Party, or the Group of Socialists and Democrats, or the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe. Each political group defines its priorities in these meetings. The agendas of the parliamentary committees and of the plenary sessions themselves depend on them. And finally, turquoise means external parliamentary activities. During this week, MEPs can be found on the ground in the constituencies of the citizens they represent. By the end of it all, the work of Parliament becomes a reality in the everyday lives of Europeans. When a piece of legislation is passed, there's nothing more to wait for than the time it takes to be adopted in the legal codes of different member states. That could mean, for example, 
the recognition of diplomas and professional qualifications, more stringent standards for food safety and labelling of products in stores, reinforced air and rail passenger rights, stricter standards for bathing water, the implementation of banking union and a weighty package of measures proposed by MEPs to deal with the crisis also adopted by Parliament. In short, finance, environment, health, consumer protection, free movement of people, goods and services, commerce, agriculture, fishing, monetary policy and so on and so forth. No one can say the work of the European Parliament isn't diverse.